So, how do you break that cycle? How do you stop that cycle from continuing? Uh, for myself, it was catching myself after the fact, feeling after I went through that devastation or in the midst of that devastation or upsetness, anxiety, anger, fear, whatever turmoil that I had going on. What I realized is that if I would leave a conversation and carry part of it with me, and I would still be thinking about it and turning it over in my head and looking at it, what does he mean by that? What is that supposed to mean? Where did that come from? What about this? What about that? Trying to rationalize it still in my head when I did not have that peace of mind after a conversation or an interaction, I would, I would catch it after the fact and say, well, gosh, here I did it again. And then I would look to see how could I have made different choices to break the cycle and then set forth the intention to do that the next time. And who knows how long that really went on until I started stopping like in the moment and actually making a conscious different choice. I feel that the way that we experience life, first it, it goes to the head. We understand it logically. Like you understand the concepts that I'm offering today. You're, you're understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth. You can see how what I'm saying probably has some validity or could possibly be true. However, you haven't experienced it yet for yourself. So like 2% of you believes or trusts the words that are coming out of my mouth, but 98% of you is still operating from your old belief system. So whenever that two comes up, that 98 is going to be shook. And the more that you can bring that into your reality, increase that 2%, the less is, you know, the more it's going to take away from the other side. So how do you get it from, what I say, get it from the, the head to the heart to the hand is my, my three steps for manifestation. You get the concept, then you have to experience the concept. And once you experience the concept, once you actually put it into action and, and try it out for yourself, it becomes your experience. You develop your own truth. That's when you have it like in your heart. That's where you own it. And when you own it and you are it and you can be it, then you're going to see it around you. So it's one thing to understand a concept. It's another thing to practice a principle. And you have to practice a principle before you're going to see any outward changes. And that's the same thing you could take like diet and exercise. For example, we know eating right and exercise is giving us results. Just knowing it or just watching a workout ex a DVD isn't going to get you into shape. You have to physically do it. And just because you know it and then you do it for one day, it doesn't mean that the results show up right around you. But if you stick to, I know it's true, and I'm going to do the actions, you're going to see the results. And that's the way it happens. For us, servingly, and against us, non-servingly. If you know that anger is going to bring more anger, and you act out anger, you're going to get more anger in more situations to bring that out in you. So what I found for myself is that anytime that I started, that I noticed that emotional uneasiness, I didn't like it. I much preferred the happiness. So then I'd look back on the situation and say, okay, where could I have made a different, dif uh, a different choice? Where did I not take responsibility for my own actions? Where did I fall short for me? Because end of the day, when it's all said and done, the people and places might change around me. I have to deal with me. I really am the only thing that I have in this world. So no matter what changes around me, in the end, it's always going to be me. And if I'm removed from this world, then who cares what happens, you know, from my perspective. So I had to catch myself after the fact. And then I started catching myself during the fact, like maybe like towards the end of the argument before it got explosive or went our separate ways or um, before I before I totally devastated everything that was happening around me. Because th that's how the mind works. When the mind perceives a threat, it's going to uh, seek to change it, fix it, avoid it, or kill it, period. That's how the mind works. So if you think about like your arguments and your, your um, confrontations with other people, that's what the mind's looking to do. It's looking to change the other person, fix the other person, avoid the other person, or kill the other person or circumstance event, you know. It might not literally go to that extent. However, that's what the mind's reaction is. And I know sometimes, for myself, I'm not gonna speak for anybody else in the room, for myself, sometimes I wish that people would just disappear. I wouldn't necessarily want to physically kill them or have them to be physically dead. I would want them just to no longer exist, at least not in my world. Just boop, be gone. Mm -hmm. So, 
and I realized too, when it, when it comes around to forgiveness, which I could do hours of workshops on that, for forgiveness, if you say, oh, I forgive this person, but I never want to see them again in my entire life, don't put them in the same room with me, that is not forgiveness. <laughs> You're fooling yourself. So, um, so yeah, that's how the mind's going to work. So then sometimes I would catch myself like midst the conversation where I was like, wait a minute, this is going in the wrong direction. Wait a minute, I'm off course here. Wait a minute, I'm not feeling happy, easy. I feel myself being defensive. I just, what I would start to do is step kind of outside myself and watch myself during the conflict or situation. During it, I would watch what I was doing and saying as if I was becoming aware and just conscious of the choices that I was making. And then eventually when I started to feel that uneasiness come up, Instead of going straight into it, I would stop myself and I would just make a more serving choice. Sometimes my ego kicking me and screaming, my mind kicking and screaming, like, whatever, you so need to say this or you need to do this or you're so justified to do this or do that. Don't let him get away with that. Don't let him do that. If you're letting him do that, then blah, 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 you know, all that craziness. I don't know if y'all get that, but I get that in my head. Um, then I can stop when that gets started and I can say, you know what, mind? You, you got me into this mess can no longer listen to you. You're not to be trusted. I appreciate you, duly noted, but what do I know to be true? I'm in my home, not in the middle of a guerrilla warfare zone. I'm dealing with my husband, not some monster that my mind's creating. So I get to the truth of the situation, and then I build my case based on what I know to be true. Instead of what my mind is making up is the reasons why somebody's doing or saying or behaving the way that they are. So I get to the truth of the situation. And then from there, I'll make a choice. And if I don't know what to do in that situation, then I'll, I'll stop the situation from proceeding. It's impossible to argue with someone that won't argue back with you. People will try it. But really, if you just choose not to react, remove yourself from the situation, give yourself time to reflect over it, when I do that, it always works out better. And sometimes, you know, whoever I'm dealing with, a lot of times it's my husband, he'll just look at me like I've lost my mind. Because a lot of times, people are used to this cycle. I mean, you guys are, we, we've just met for the first time today, or, you know, one of the few times that we've been around one another, and we're, we all have this same thing that we see happen in our life. So this is just something that everybody else is doing. We're used to somebody starting it and reacting, or reacting to how they started things, and um, we kind of expect this cycle. Well, if you do something different, it's going to break the cycle. It's not gonna let it continue. So even if it takes as much as, I don't know what to say to you right now, all that I know is that I don't wanna feel the way that I'm starting to feel, so until I know what to say or do, I'm not going to continue this conversation. Or just respecting, you know, I'm choosing to be happy. I'm going to, if you want to choose to be miserable, I will allow you to do that. I'd really rather you be happy with me because, I mean, that's what a relationship ideally is all about, regardless if it's friends or spouse or parents or whoever. Um, I'll just stop right there in the cycle. I'll just, I'll just make a different choice. And I use my grounding technique of taking that deep breath. I empty myself out. So I can choose what's going to fill me back up, and then I make choices that are going to lead me in the direction that I want to go. Eventually, what I would like to have happen, and what I find happening in some circumstances, it has become my second nature, or what I like to say is that I'm getting back to my original, my true nature, because I think our true nature is to be all loving, kind, accepting. I mean, look at the kids. <laughs> kids are such a perfect blessing for us. They are footloose, fancy free, all about having fun and making things a game. And as soon as you apologize to a child, they say, okay, I love you, bye. And they don't hold a grudge. They don't carry it with them. You know, kids are very, very forgiving. We can learn so much from them. And they don't take all this stuff so serious. If we're taking it serious, you're, um, or if you're, you're feeling frustrated, chances are you're taking it too serious. And if you're taking it too serious, in my opinion, you're missing the whole point of why we're here. I believe we're here to be blissful, loving, happy creatures, not miserable, angry, spiteful, revengeful, regretful, rueful, hateful people. I just don't feel that that's what we were put here to do. I mean, what would, what would be the point of that? 
then again, at the end, if I find out that I'm wrong and that I was really supposed to be miserable all these years, I'll deal with it then. But I would much rather deal with it that way than to be miserable and suffer and get to the end and find out I was taking it all way too serious. So now when I feel that pressure kind of coming down on me now, I do kind of just stop and laugh because I realize I believe that I create my own reality. I believe that I create all the circumstances that are around me. So if I have something crazy that's just ridiculous and overwhelming and scary and, you know, seemingly disastrous happening, I kind of giggle because I created it. I created it. I made it my reality. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. However, it doesn't change the situation for what it is. And usually if I can shift my perspective and get back into that light, physically lighter space, spiritually lighter space, then I can make different choices. And I'm like, okay, I created this whole thing, so obviously I couldn't have created it without knowing a way to get back out of it, so let me just work on being that which I want to receive and let the rest take care of itself. Because again, I can't choose how someone else is going to react. If somebody else is determined to be miserable, I guarantee you they're gonna be miserable no matter what you do, what you say, whatever. If they want to be miserable, they will. I'm a massage therapist. I work on a lot of different people. Some people get well like that. Some people I know will never get well. They could be on my table every single day for the rest of their life and they will never get better because they're determined to be miserable. Now, they won't take responsibility for their situation, which is part of the reason why they're gonna continue to be miserable. However, that's, that's the reality of the situation. So being able to stop in the, in, in the cycle and make a different choice, but you have to become aware of the cycle first. So a lot of people can start to see their participation, but don't understand why they, they don't stop it or why they don't make a different choice or why they're making the choices that they're making. For me, it just came to be kind of a control issue. I refuse to let other things have control over me, and I'm bound and determined to create a life that's peaceful and blissful or to learn that I have it all wrong. So the only way to do it is to try it, and I'm willing to risk it. So it's kind of like no risk, no reward. So we really um, thrive as a species when we connect with other people. And we are not created to be isolated and alone. So being isolated and alone can kind of perpetuate the problem. And so again, while that might alleviate the symptoms, remove all those outside stimulus, you're creating a whole other problem for yourself and you're not ever going to build your belief in yourself that you're capable of making different choices if you keep yourself pulled back. So what I would recommend doing is if you know that one situation has always been volatile, it's explosive every time that you interact with a certain person or situation, if you know that this just is totally terrifies you just even thinking about it, it'd be kind of like, picture that heroin addict again, knowing that they want to get clean and they know that if they go to this certain neighborhood or around this certain group of people, it's going to be so much temptation that they don't trust themselves to enter that situation. It's the same kind of thing. So if you have a situation that you know, like just the thought of it totally wipes you out energetically, makes you feel like going to your knees and crawling into a corner and hiding other than facing it, then I would probably recommend not to start with that situation. Find another situation. Find a safe environment where you can start practicing making different choices. Um, and you can pick somewhere that is typically kind of hostile if you want, or you can just kind of start out, you know, just getting yourself back into society and social situations and around other people so that you have an opportunity to prove to yourself that you can make a different choice. The nice thing about strangers is that you don't have that history of heartache and they know nothing about you. So you can be whoever, whatever you want to be around people who don't know you. What usually happens is that we don't realize this. At least I didn't realize this. I just thought I was who I was, and that's all that I was. And who I thought I was was who I really am. So that's who I brought to every situation. So I brought that same victim mentality to every situation. I brought that same insecure girl to every situation. When I realized, wait a minute, these people don't know me at all, and if I just show up really excited and happy and genuinely interested in other people, because there's a difference between being like bubbly and over the top and totally fake 
and being very genuine and loving and kind and really wanting to connect with people, that's two totally different things. Um, but I would think to myself, okay, if I was really happy, fulfilled, content, loving, kind, not threatened, if I was really confident with myself, how would I be? And then I would just choose to show up that way. And what I found is that the people around me didn't know any different, so they just took what they saw show up, so they think that that's me. And so it was easier to be that person that I wanted to be around new people versus these old people that as soon as they would say one thing, that one little trigger would default me back into how I used to be. And that's why it's harder to change around those people that I have the close relationships with and that history with than with the newer people. But the new people are awesome because y'all let me practice being great. So the more practice I have at being great, the more that 2% of knowing that I have greatness inside me has a chance to expand in that 98% of thinking that I'm worthless, um, ill-equipped, not good enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough, not fit enough, not whatever enough, that is starting to go down too. So I'm building my belief in myself, why? Because I'm getting feedback that's confirming to me that I'm all these wonderful things. So as I was building my belief in myself, I was kind of losing that victim mentality and I was proving all these new principles to be a new truth for me, then I it just kind of became my second nature. Now, um, because I practice it so much around other people, like I catch people in their stories, um, um, I don't know, I just don't let people be negative or be down in the dumps or create drama around me. I'll stop them from doing that. And it's easy to do in those new relationships, again, because people are just more open. But then I was doing it so much that now when I'm, in, when I'm in my home environment and my husband says something that's negative, instead of me just taking it as, oh, that's just him, and that's the way it is, I notice it now. And I can stop and say, well, why don't we look at it this way instead? Or sometimes when I'm feeling that way, I'll do this instead. And I do the same things at home that I do around my other people. And I'm starting to get the same results. So it took building my belief in myself to where I would start to trust myself to go into those really hard to face situations. And it's the people for me that I'm closest to that I really want them to like me. I really want their love and their approval and their acceptance. I care more about their acceptance of me than I do all the strangers and people that I meet out and about. So I'm a little bit more attached to the outcome and that can kind of screw things up as well. That attachment brings about expectations and then it also can bring in manipulation and trying to control to get that specific outcome versus here, if nobody likes me, I don't care, y'all are a bunch of strangers. <laughs> I'll never have to see you again. But this person, I have to wake up next to every single day, and you know, there's a little bit more attachment to it. I want our relationship to work out. I want to be with him for the rest of my life. I want these things, and I'm kind of attached.